Mandla Pundi from Orzota. He's a CTO and president. So I welcome everyone to the webinar and thanks again uh, taking the time out to attend the webinar. And throughout the webinar, before we start with the uh, webinar, please feel free to ask us the question during the webinar and we will take question and answer at the end of the webinar. And let me just briefly introduce Signex Datamatics before I hand over and introduce Bharat. So Signex Datamatics, it's a pure play open source solution company. The company was founded in uh, Santa Clara Bay Area in 2000. And since then we have worked globally with many customers, help them adopt open source in their enterprise solutions. Primarily, we focus on the four areas of solutions which are covering system of engagement and system of insight, portals, content and collaboration, enterprise content management, internet of things and big data analytics, and e-commerce. We have 500 plus open source consultants and they're spread across the four or five different offices, uh, mainly in US and India. As an open source, every year we have been authoring one book so far, we have published 14 books on the open source topics. And this year in December, we'll be publishing our 15th book. We have designed business engagement platforms which are ready to use, customize, and uh, uh, absolutely accelerate their development time. Now, coming to the webinar topic, uh, before I hand over to Bharat, just I'm going to ask Bharat to introduce himself. He's a co-founder and president of and CTO of Orzota. So Bharat will take it forward. Bharat, thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Nero. Uh, hi, everyone. Good morning, and uh, thanks for taking time to attend this webinar. Uh, let me introduce myself first. Um, I'm Bharat Mandlapuri, the co-founder uh, of Arzoda. Uh, I've been uh, in big data space for a long time, uh, seen Hadoop grow from its uh, baby, right, uh, as baby, and we see now it's a matured elephant uh, serving a lot of enterprises. I was in the initial team at Hadoop uh, Yahoo Group, uh, which was doing uh, Hadoop at the time. Uh, I have extensive experience uh, in terms of advisory for both uh, technical and strategy on the big data technologies, also on the data science solutions for various verticals. Uh, prior to that, uh, I was in the data science uh, group at uh, uh, which was making the recommendation engine uh, right for the customer experience and also search, uh, search experience using uh, big data technologies. Uh, prior to that, I was in the JVM group at Sun. Uh, I had a long stint at Sun Microsystem. I was leading a lot of efforts uh, in the JVM group, uh, driving XML and web services and also the J2E application server. Okay, a little bit background about Arzota. Uh, Arzota is a big data solutions company. Uh, we are uh, we provide technology enabled services uh, to help businesses to accelerate their to accelerate their big data projects. Uh, we have very skilled data scientists, uh, data architects, and also data engineers. And we helped uh, many verticals uh, to build custom solutions for the customers. Uh, we categorize our services into three categories. Uh, like the strategic services, architectural services, and implementation services. Uh, some of these, some of these things are shown here. Uh, on the strategic uh, services side, uh, use case discovery, prioritizing the use cases, road mapping, uh, right, the business objectives, and uh, laying out the technology roadmap and vendor evaluation. And on the architectural services, uh, everything including the systems design, uh, laying out. Uh, how the architecture should look like in the modern data warehouse uh, and things of those sort uh, will be covered in those services. Also, we have done a lot of POCs for customers, right, on POC and POV, uh, we call it proof of value on the analytical application side. Uh, some of the uh, machine learning predictive analytics uh, we have done for a few customers. And we are really good with performance optimizations, whether, whether it is on the predictive modeling side are also on the data warehousing side. Uh, we have listed some of our customers. Uh, so we have touched almost 20 use cases uh, across the verticals. Uh, that's our pedigree. So uh, in today's webinar, uh, we're going to talk about uh, these items, uh, right? So I want to walk you through the history 
of data warehouse to start with, right? How uh, the data warehouse is evolving, what's the typical uh, enterprise data warehouse looks like, and then I'll take you to one more to the present, right? Where we talk about uh, how you can argument Hadoop to your existing uh, EDW and what are the pain points uh, in the current EDW, how Hadoop is addressing those, and the solutions which Hadoop can solve and some of the use cases in that direction, right? And then we will walk through one of the use cases we have done for uh, a top uh, US 10 banks in US uh, where we deployed and offloaded, uh, right, uh, argumented Hadoop to Teradata. Uh, that, that use case will go in depth. Uh, some of the lessons we learned, not only seeing this particular use case, but across the industry, some of the best practices. What are the challenges, right? Uh, I, I would say this is a very important for you to walk away. Hey, what have these guys done so far six, seven years in this space? And you'll go walk away with these challenges so you can incorporate your best practices so you don't make mistakes and right lose the time. So you, you can fast to uh, market uh, for the solutions. And so we'll talk about some benefit uh, benefits with the solution, and later uh, we'll have a Q and A. The questions you have. Okay, I'll move to the next slide. Uh, so let's talk about the history. I mean, uh, initially it all started with OLTP. Then uh, the needs of data were, were growing at the time, even early 2000s, uh, right? Even 1998, around that time. I think Teradata was the uh, baby as we are seeing right now Hadoop, right? Teradata was playing that game. A and they discovered a space in data warehousing where OLTP can't meet the needs of data warehousing, right? So th that's how the whole data warehousing evolved. And you take, uh, you push the computation uh, where you need ACID properties and all these things to transactional systems and move your uh, historical information into the warehouses, so where you can do analytics and backend processing. Uh, th that's the history, and if you see this uh, diagram here, on the left side, you're seeing all predominantly uh, OLTP kind of applications, where they're writing their data at a high frequency, or even the transactions are satisfying the ACID properties uh, like that, and uh, you, you have uh, CRM systems where uh, customer relation databases evolved over time. Uh, Salesforce is one example there. And you have certain data assets there. And SAP and Oracle played on uh, enterprise resource planning side where you have your business data sitting there. So the, it was happening. I mean, this data convergence to data warehouse, they, they were doing but not many people, but predominantly OLTP application data were fed into data warehouses. And a lot of ETL work was done, enrichment and filtering and transformations were done in the warehouse. And then you move to the lines of business, the marketing or sales or customer service, you build your data marts and put the data into data marts and build the BI and uh, traditional reports. Right? This was the history. And I'm sure, I mean, a lot of organizations still carry this uh, legacy. It's still happening. But a lot, lot of things are changing. The business needs are going uh, more in terms of uh, real time, right? Uh, that's one of the use cases is coming. Like, uh, the time to see uh, these reports or time to make decisions is shrinking. Right? You, you want faster, right? What's happening last hour or yesterday? These kinds of questions. Before, it was like monthly reports or weekly reports uh, of those sort. Uh, that, that tradition is still there, even in big data space, but that space is quickly evolving. We're, we're going to see those use cases, what is happening in that angle. So what are the modern needs now, right, with this big data coming into play, uh, how it is disrupting the traditional uh, data where, let's take some of the examples. So modern businesses are asking now, I, I want high velocity, right? How can I capture my high velocity data? Take example IoT or healthcare, right? So you want patient monitoring data. Every second you are emitting across the hospitals and you want to carry that. Or insurance industry, if you take, they, they want to monitor their customers, uh, how their uh, driving patterns are. A lot of data is emitted, right? And you need to capture this high velocity data. That means we are talking about high rights. So millions of reads and writes is a big requirement today. And the second one is, 
I want to roll out my applications faster and I want agility in the process. Uh, this is a very important one. So to deliver your solutions to the market very efficiently, very important one, right? And the second one, third one is, so efficiency in analytical and operational processing. Today, if you see with the traditional data warehouses, they either build sandboxes for analytical things and uh, operational could be your EDW. Uh, what we are saying is now, now the requirements are saying why should I invest into uh, platforms rather can I do multi-tenancy on both? How can I do efficiently? To some level today they do it, but uh, the, the, we will talk about this point in detail in the future slide. The other business case is uh, you want to replicate your data center right for business continuity. If any one of your data center fails or the power goes down for any reason, you, you want to have your processes, your uh, data, your applications all protected so you have a, a replication uh, across uh, ge uh, geographies or right separated by distance. The next one is global delivery. Today, I mean, we, we are, uh, I, I seriously think that we, we are in the early phase of 21st century for the globalization, which is a lot of companies are going global. Uh, you saw Netflix, I mean, going country by country and they are hacking everywhere. Uh, similarly, that pattern is repeating with everybody. So what are the best practices with respect to big data, right? The application moment is happening and with the application moment, the cloud is enabling this, right, to go globally very fast. And then uh, what will follow next is big data. If you move your applications globally, you have to make your data, uh, big data follow there too because uh, the uh, regulations, compliance, uh, you can't move data from one country. European uh, countries have a lot of restriction in moving data from their region to US, for example, right? So you, you need to have local insights, what's happening there, geographic specific data, and get the geographic specific data analysis done and then send back the insights to a common location to the centralized enterprise. The other one is scale on demand, right? I, I don't want to buy massive infrastructure and keep it there, assuming future data will come, future use cases will come. So you want to scale uh, with the business agility, right? As your uh, demand for business use cases come or uh, as the day new data arrives, you want to scale the system. So you want to keep in mind that you will see, you want to reduce that total cost of ownership. Okay, so these are all the modern new requirements are driving, uh, pushing the big data to the next level. And uh, the main topic of today is the five reasons why you want to adapt, right? Uh, uh, Hadoop as a data argumentation to Tera Tera data or any EDW case. So here uh, we see the five use cases. Uh, the, the number one is the traditional warehouses uh, doesn't handle or they didn't uh, design their system or architect uh, for unstructured data, right? So they, their inability to handle unstructured data right off the bat. Right? And if you see the some of the stats uh, people are talking about, the 80% of the data is unstructured data. So people were not using it, now they're trying to use like customer service data or uh, the, the blog posts or the videos or images, all these unstructured data you want to handle in the system. Right, and the next one is uh, excessive resource use. So we think, I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, wastage uh, in terms of computation power of this expensive EGW machine, right? You are running ETL jobs, you are running your analytical jobs over there, and where you can think of, I mean, t offloading these ETL, right? Use the, uh, what is uh, good at uh, EDW, like, uh, like it is good at for analytics jobs or low latency jobs. You can run those kinds of jobs there, but if you're trying to transform or if you want to enrich this data, all these use cases can be offloaded and you can save massive amounts of money in that process because you don't need uh, further maintenance, upgrade costs and all those things uh, with respect to EDW. The third one is, a wasted storage, right? Uh, this requires a lot of analysis from your system. You need to go and really deep dive into the data. But typical stats are that uh, you just use 20% of your hot data. So hot means your recent data where you keep on querying the data. But the remaining 80% of the data is sitting in your warehouse and uh, no, nobody is using that, right? 
uh, unless in or they, they use monthly or six months once. Uh, if that is the need, uh, you need to plan for taking out that and use efficiently uh, your EDW. And the next one, fourth one is inefficient backups. Right today, if you see any backup system, so you, you need a local backup system or a remote backup system which is attached to your EDW. Typically, those uh, backup systems are tape drives, and they are pretty slow. Uh, if you're trying to do the cost cutting on backups, so on backups also there are various technologies. They they do the raiding with the disks uh, and provide the enterprise enterprise grade disks. Those are very expensive because you're talking about the massive data sets here for the backup. But here we're talking about tape drives, which are, which are commodity. And then, uh, right, uh, it is a bit slow. Uh, why would you want to wait for a week to retrieve uh, your data back into EDW, right? So that, that's what we're talking about. So we have to see this is another disruption is happening with uh, big data technologies that you can replace those backups with Hadoop. Right? And you, you can really improve the time to recover that data into EDW. The fifth one is disaster recovery. I mean, again, you have to buy two licenses, one for your primary and, and the, another for the secondary. Here, what we are saying is you need to think, rethink about your uh, secondary strategy, right? how you can do uh, offloading to big data. OK, so I'll move on to the next slide. Uh, so what is the solution for all these five problems I talked about uh, is uh, Hadoop. Uh, it's the panacea for all those problems uh, I listed. And you all know, uh, basically, it's a framework built for large computation. Uh, and by far, I, I take the privilege to tell that uh, Hadoop is the only technology, right? I repeat it again. It's the only technology which can scale to massive petabytes of data. There's no Cassandra, there's no MongoDB. They can play some role uh, depending on the data sizes, but this is the only technology. Right? Even Facebook is using Hadoop. Uh, I think by far they're the largest uh, users, I would say, now. When we started, Yahoo was the number one, but uh, now with Facebook, uh, I think probably they have uh, massive data. Probably they'll be reaching exabytes soon. right? So that, that is the scale uh, Hadoop can support. The technology is very matured, and it runs on commodity servers, and it's, it's built for scalability. And a lot of people get confused uh, confused between scalability and performance. Uh, that, that's a, another topic for another day. But I, I'll not go into details on that side. Uh, and also built-in uh, distributedness and then fault tolerance uh, all comes for free. It's free. I mean, the product is free, open source. I can just download it and play with it right? instead of paying millions of dollars to uh, traditional vendors. And as I said, this is a dominant technology in the big data. It's going to stay. It crossed the chasm. It's already in the enterprise. Right? And I want to touch base a few things. Probably the, there's no score, uh, it's not the scope for this project, uh, which is the real time. Uh, right? A lot of things are happening in the real time space. And also in memory analytics, the Spark side. But I'm very happy if you guys have any questions on those, those directions, please type those questions. We'll take it at the end of the call. And then who are the distributors? So somebody has to support this technology. So a lot of money uh, going into uh, this space. So Cloudera and Hortonworks are the predominant members. And uh, MapR is a little bit in the intersection. They, they play a dual role. They, they are half open source and half proprietary. Their file system is completely proprietary. But they, the APIs and everything uh, uh, are like open source version. And the interesting aspect of MapR is that uh, they, they support more use cases uh, in some sense uh, than, uh, than the open source. But the problem is that they, they, it's a hard time for them to catch up the innovation happening on the open source. Right? So we, we need to look at if, uh, if you're interested. Uh, in uh, getting Hadoop into the company, uh, let us know or uh, Cygnus team. Uh, we, we can have in-depth discussion on that direction. So we, we have done a lot of vendor evaluation at the technology level. Okay, let's compare and contrast these two. So backups are slow on the proprietary, and then the backups are relatively cheap on Hadoop, and recovery is faster. Some of the examples on proprietary databases, or EDW uh, cases, are Teradata, Oracle, IBM DB2. And uh, on the Hadoop side, I already talked about it, Cloudera, Hortonworks, and MapR. 
On the performance side, uh, today you run everything in one. They compete uh, each other in terms of computation, memory, disk, uh, right, network, everything. So here you can offload, uh, right, with Hadoop, some of these use cases, uh, uh, and uh, you can be better utilize your EDW. And the fourth one is the capacity. We talked about 20% is the hot data. So you move your cold and warm data into Hadoop. So you build the history into Hadoop, the latest one, for wherever the low latency requirements are there, you can put it onto Teradata or DB2 or Oracle Exadata, for example. And uh, coming to ROI, it's a no-brainer, right? I mean, you see there's a lot of value in Hadoop. Uh, proprietary databases are very expensive, and uh, right, even to expand your future business operations, it's going to cost you very dearly. And here we're talking about Hadoop's cost is one-tenth, right? Anywhere from 2 to 10% of the cost of the ATW. That's a massive difference you're going to see. So now let's see the diagram, uh, right, the architecture, uh, kind of uh, how Hadoop uh, is uh, put into, uh, right, uh, ETW uh, warehouse. Uh, so in, uh, with respect to Hadoop uh, emerging in the warehouse technologies, so you're going to now ingest even your unstructured data, and you, again, uh, get your uh, structural data also. Uh, by the way, Hadoop is like, uh, write once, read many times, right? You can dump uh, anything, any kind of data uh, into Hadoop. That, that's why it's called data lake. You, you are actually getting all kinds of data, whether it's structured, semi-structured, or unstructured. All these data sets, you get it and put it into Hadoop system. Uh, and then the new, new things which are happening on Hadoop are like you have graph databases, document databases, key value data. Everything is built on this framework, right? Our in-memory databases for low latency, which is a highly evolving space, right? So the advanced analytics is coming to the Hadoop, and uh, which is uh, redefining uh, the machine learning at a large scale, right? Only it's not just Google and Yahoo's or Facebooks can do this. Now every enterprise can do this because this technology is available to everybody. It is democratized, and. Uh, uh, on the Teradata, so you have now uh, get the, all the data into Hadoop. You move, you do the enrichment, filtering everything here, offloaded processing, and then move the final data set to Teradata, and you do the traditional BI. So we will talk more about this uh, in a depth in a case study, so you will see the more value uh, in this process. Let's talk about uh, some of the use cases Hadoop is trying to uh, address. Uh, so we have single view of the customer, uh, which is a very, very popular one. If you look, I mean, if you inspect all these companies like Yahoo, Google, and Facebook, the primary reason they have this Hadoop system is to understand their customers better, right? Every click, every view they're doing, everything they want to understand, which is the same case for retail, healthcare, or manufacturing, anything. You want to optimize your process, either you, you want to enhance your product or enhance the operations or you want to enhance the customer experience. All these things boil down to this customer 360 use case, right? The second one is customer churn analysis. You want to analyze how, uh, right, uh, customers uh, are leaving your company, how to retain them, how to, uh, how to run efficient campaigns for them, targeted marketing. Uh, then there the are areas around fraud detection and risk modeling. Uh, because there's also a huge big data problem. And I highlighted this one data like as a blue because that, that's the one we are going to talk in this presentation uh, with a particular use case. Uh, and the operational analysis, as I talked about. And search experience, right? Search experience is the most complex problem, right? Uh, what I present uh, it is a little bit related to recommendations too, which, is, which are interrelated. Uh, they they complement each other in a certain way. Uh, Netflix tries to go with recommendations and Google wants to do search, right? So uh, the complementary part here is that once you have very good recommendation engine, you can altogether technically take out search problem, right? Uh, so it's evolution in the information retrieval technology. So uh, you start with search, then go in the recommendation engine and go uh, next level, next level. And the network failure detection is another problem which can be efficiently solved with Hadoop. So let, let's uh, deep dive uh, into one of the use cases we have done for a bank in US. Uh, it's a Hadoop argumentation problem. 
Okay, so uh, so what is their problem? What are the challenges? Why they wanted to uh, uh, offload uh, big data into Hadoop? Number one, first of all, they couldn't scale it. There is inherently a scalability problem built into any data warehouse platform, right? Whether it be Natija, Teradata, or DB2, there, there is a scale aspect of it. Then you, you might ask me a question uh, whether the same problem applies to Hadoop. Yes, that problem is there, but the scale is, uh, we are talking about the order of magnitude. We are talking about exabytes versus terabytes, right? Hadoop is proven to be a technology where it can scale until exabytes. Uh, but beyond that, yes, Hadoop needs to, again, work and improve. Uh, initially, when we started at Hadoop, uh, Hadoop at Yahoo, it was like maybe 50 nodes, 100 nodes that I would call pre-V1, right? Uh, so then it evolved to 4,000 nodes in version 1, and now it is 10,000 nodes. So it's, it's scaling massively. And there's a lot of innovation in the hardware which is driving. You, you can put a lot of data. I wouldn't be surprised if we are carrying 60 terabytes in my pocket right in the future. That, that is the space we're talking about. The storage innovation is happening. It is getting commoditized. You, you can get gigabytes for a few cents, or even some cases actually less than one cent, right? So th that, that's the commoditization happening in the hardware space. And the second one they want to do is they, they want to save actually the millions of dollars with this upgrade. So if you want to go beyond this, they have to go to the newer version. And then that, that is costing them. It's not just the licensing and the software cost. What about the 300, 400 applications which are running on the current system? How do you migrate those? Right. So these are the challenges. So if they want to completely take out or right offload, we, we need to find a system which can right do the split brain kind of functionality. Right. The same functionality should be replicated in the other system. So th these were the business challenges. Uh, so we went and provided a solution on Hadoop. By far, I mean, we are proud to say that probably this is the by far the first use case which was done uh, in the industry to offload uh, enterprise data warehouse to Hadoop. Okay. Uh, then the trend followed. I mean, everybody started. Okay, this is a beautiful. Okay, Hadoop can argument, and uh, they started offloading from ADW. So there's a lot of lessons. Uh, I'll talk about that. Very, very, very important for you. Uh, then the objective is to, of course, uh, 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 avoid the upgrade cost and reduce ongoing maintenance, right? And the scalability on demand. Uh, this was the business objectives. Okay, now let's move on to the Hadoop, uh, the solution we provided. So they, they had before mainframe and Teradata, they were integrated. Uh, then we introduced Hadoop in between. So the, all these processes we introduced into Hadoop, the ETL process. Uh, how do we move the data from mainframe to Hadoop and Hadoop to Teradata? The, the data movement processes per there. Then all the data verification, very, very important, right? You, because it's a financial bank, uh, you need to worry about uh, the data accuracy, correctness, timeliness, all these attributes uh, needs to go into verification aspect of it. And then data quality, right? Uh, am I getting the right values within the data? And data profiling, you do. A lot of aspects of uh, that, and also data governance and data management. All these layers we orchestrated into Hadoop, and the, to take care of everything the seamlessly flow end to end. So we introduced the uh, scheduler to move the data efficiently, do the efficient processing, and move the final data set to Teradata. And there are many actors here, as you see here. I mean, I listed only a few, but the data stewards, data custodians, data architects. Every play, everybody plays a role, right? Uh, the, if there is an infosec group, a security dimension, they will look at. Uh, so all these actors will be embedded in this whole process. Okay, the data scientists, data engineers, and data analysts. Okay, so the approach we took is very simple, right? You define the problem, right? I'll walk into that. Then you architect a solution for that, and then you go and execute. So at a, at a high level, that. And let's see, let's go into define, right? You have to start with always a business problem, right? We can't just make up a business problem. Business, if you need funding, you want to impress your business lines of business, you need to clearly get a buy-in from them, uh, impress them with this technology, what is the value it's going to provide to them with respect to time to market and various other, the cost efficiency and things like that. Technically, you're reducing the cost and putting the other money to support your lines of business. If you are one of the lines of business, uh, it is much better still. I mean, there are self-serving platforms are evolving right now, so which where you can a little bit cut down on the IT costs and things like that. 
start with your business objectives and align your use cases to your business objectives and put together a migration strategy, how you want to go step by step, right? Uh, with respect to technology evaluation, use cases, how do you want to take it to production, and the timelining of all those things. Very important. Clearly define this defined stage. The next one is go to the architecture, and you architect a solution for these problems. Uh, use the right technology, right, right hardware selection. You want a cloud strategy or data warehouse, um, or you want to on-prem. Uh, all these things need to be decided in, the, in this stage. And technology selection, is it like how you solving my problem or uh, pig solving my problem? Some of the, these are the te technologies within Hadoop. So selecting the right technology to meet your use case uh, for efficiency. And the last one, once you have a clear plan of the architecture, this is how uh, you're going to do it and go and execute, right? You implement, deploy it, verify and test it as a small POC. Always we recommend customers is start small, right? Don't, don't have ambition, if you're starting, if you're a beginner, there are four stages in big data implementation. If you are at a stage zero, we strongly recommend to uh, start small, uh, take one use case and see the value, convince your management, uh, right, working out and go higher and higher. That's the beauty of Hadoop anyway, right? You need not have the massive cluster going in the day one. Start with 10 node cluster and see the value. So this is a very important slide for you to walk away today, uh, uh, right? Uh, so what, what were the key patterns and challenges we are seeing across uh, uh, in, in the big data implementation? Uh, so we categorize into two aspects. So the first one is the business challenges and the second is the technical challenges. So on the business side, <clears throat> use case discovery is still a problem, right? Use case, there, there are use cases in the, I mean, you can Google it, you'll find a lot of use cases for your vertical, if for healthcare, there's uh, patient care, clinical trials, there are so many use cases over there. But, but the thing is, how do you right, uh, see that, that use case is applicable to your business? So it is more of a uh, domain expert uh, from your business, uh, business driven requirements needs to drive the use cases. Right? Instead of uh, picking just from industry, hey, other people are doing, let's do it. But it has to come within your organization. That's how I mean, you will innovate in your own field. So uh, this is one challenge we see, uh, how to convince our management, uh, right, the, the, what, what is the value in this particular use case, prioritization of those values, it just more it's your DNA, right, it is your business, so you pick your use case. The next one is the value from data. So there's a big, uh, right, uh, wave about this data science today uh, deriving value, but I can tell you from my experience, even two years people are sitting and working on these models and uh, right, getting some predictive models. That, that is not it. Value means it's not in the predictive analytics. The value is moving your revenue, moving your, right, finding new channels. That's what we're talking about value. It's not in the models, right? How do you take these and operationalize it and move the business native? That requires time, right? You deploy these models and it takes a long time to uh, to even see that value. So this is a hard problem, right? Uh, I, I think the, the, the beauty today is that a uh, lot of tools are available to experiment. Uh, since it's open source, everything comes for free, right? If you have experts in-house or you can staff augment uh, with the companies like us and we help you uh, go navigate those problems. And I listed here, interestingly enough, project management, right? Some of you might ask, hey, why project management is a challenge today? So project management is a challenge today because uh, if the project manager doesn't know the nitty-gritty details of these technologies, it's very, uh, right, it's very difficult to uh, come up with these line items, uh, right? Otherwise, these projects will go willy-nilly, right? You really need to understand the intricacies of this technology to even define the timelines, uh, the talent pool, and everything. How do you roadmap uh, this thing and uh, effectiveness of your execution? So it's very important augment your project manager if, you, if you're starting new in this space uh, with a, a good architect level uh, who sit with project manager to define this uh, road mapping. The next one is technology strategy. How this space is evolving? Is my investments will be useless next two years or how this uh, whole uh, big data trend is going? Very, very important for the business because if I'm investing a million dollar, I want to make sure Right, at least it will serve me for next five years. So th that is a uh, roadmap you need to have. And the talent pool, it's very hard to find these kinds of talent who understands 
uh, all the details of these technologies. Uh, so how do you recruit them? How do you hire them? Where do you find them? Uh, that's a whole game of talent acquisition, right? What kinds of skill sets do I need? And how do I mature my employees? How do I train my employees? A lot of questions around talent. And the process, again, it's a no-brainer, right? This process, people, technology is always important. So process, I'm specifically talking all these points led to big data, right? These were there for other things. Again, they, they apply to big data, uh, especially more important because the investment uh, you're going to make in this technology. On the technical side, how do you want to structure the data? Uh, the functional gap between uh, existing EGW versus Hadoop, are there any missing uh, right functions which are not available in Hadoop? So the, the, we need to do a lot of analysis on that, and how do we take care of the functional gaps? And if you're a financial company, a floating point computation is a very, very important use case. Or even if you have a financial division and which uh, wants to put the data into Hadoop, how do we secure that data? And what are my uh, right floating point computation challenges? Uh, let's say if computation is happening on Teradata and you want to offload that computation to Hadoop, you might see a discrepancy in the values because the way JVM works, right? Hadoop is designed on uh, Java technology. The floating point implementation in Java versus uh, this traditional EDW might be different. At the JVM level itself, it might not be supporting. This is a very complex problem. We solve for one of the banks. Uh, it, it's very important to understand this uh, this level of detail. Otherwise, you, you will waste like six to six to one year, right, uh, time frame. And the single source of truth, right? Uh, you have to understand, have a perspective uh, about uh, what, what is my source coming? Is it EDW or Hadoop, right? So th that strategy you need to have. That depends on your long-term goals and uh, many factors, but that's one, one of the challenges uh, I see. Otherwise, what will happen is it's a split brain. You do both the things on both sides and you get confused. Okay, which one to trust? Then the key management, how do you do efficiently uh, referential uh, key integration, secondary keys, and surrogate keys, all the key management issues. And then verification, integrity, and quality is another whole big nine yards. And the right data architecture, your ingestion framework and serving layers, how they need to interact with our your existing uh, other data architectures. OK, the benefits, right? I mean, it's, we already talked about the pain points. I mean, they complement with the benefits. So your performance will improve. Your lines of business are very happy because your most of the cases, your SLAs are improved because Hadoop can scale horizontally. And in some cases, you will match exactly with the EDW performance. And uh, capacity side, you offloaded a lot of data to EDW, right? Uh, so you offloaded from EDW to Hadoop. So you have a lot of space now. You can use other business use cases on the EDW. And you, you will leverage, this is the, my uh, pet peeve, right? I, mean, I, I like this point, leveraging open source technologies uh, advancements, which is happening today. I mean, I'm literally getting uh, every day a lot of machine learning libraries for free. Before, I need to go and approach my proprietary vendor. There's a cost involved. Now I, I can go and experiment, build a team in-house, or uh, get uh, who are experts in this space and experiment with this stuff. Right, free of cost. You're not doing anything. If your lines of business is not technology, more business centric, leverage other capabilities and experiment with new things. See what value you can derive from the data. And of course, you are lowering the cost to one tenth by augmenting Hadoop. You offloaded all the data from, uh, right, most of the data, 80% of the data into Hadoop from EDW. And your license calls and vendor dependencies are gone now. You're accelerating the development. Three years back, some features was not there, but the Hadoop is going like a hockey stick growth right now, right? Uh, the new technologies like Spark and uh, uh, other, other technologies are playing on the low latency. So from the uh, out of the box perspective, you, you get a lot of uh, features. Okay, I will uh, stop my uh, talk here. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll uh, send the mic to uh, Nero. Sure, thanks, Bharat. Thanks a lot. Um, excellent session and absolutely very useful. Now, for everyone on the bridge who um, on the webinar, we would like to. Uh, on the next slide, I'm gonna. You know, we are open for question and answer. I have received the questions, and uh, let me just brief you, uh, Brad. If you can go to the next slide. Yeah. So there are two things. Uh, from the open source perspective, if you're using open source, excellent. 
but there is a quick opera assessment which is open source readiness assessment it's available it's there are 25 questions uh, it will hardly take 15 minutes and immediately you will get get a report which will kind of highlight the, the customer centricity that you have in your enterprise the level of customer insight the level of customer engagement so these 25 questions if you answer you will get pretty much idea of where your organi organization stands with respect to customer centricity so I encourage all of you to take a quick assessment uh, which is completely available online and you will get instant report the second thing if you are not using big data technology or any analytics platform you would like to try it out we can do a proof of concept for you it's $5,000 and we can deliver a proof of concept for you um, there is a third thing which uh, we are more than happy or Zota and Signex to offer you two or free consultations um, you just need to drop an email to info at signex.com so or send out fill up a form on signex.com websites contact us form and uh, absolutely we'll schedule it we'll get in touch with you and this two hour free consultations uh, for your time for attending the webinar absolutely so appreciate all of you for taking the time out now I'm going to start with questions so I've got quite a few questions actually Bharat so I'm going to read out and uh, I will probably try to unmute uh, one of our attendees would like to ask questions over the phone but let me go over the question that I receive in the chat okay. so the very first question is Bharat from Hadoop to EDW where the transformations are happening before Hadoop ETL or after Hadoop <coughs> Hadoop ETL excuse me so so th that is the thing, right? I mean, uh, so you, you know how Teradata works or uh, any uh, EDW works. So your transformations uh, are happening in Hadoop, right? So there are, there are various stages in this architecture. So you, a lot of companies I've seen where they put Informatica in front of Hadoop, and then you do Hadoop, and then you do Teradata. In my opinion, I mean, you don't need uh, in this particular use case uh, again, uh, case by case basis, right? Most of the cases, I would say 90% of the cases, you, you don't need Informatica in front of Hadoop. So that means ETL is happening within Hadoop. We offloaded from Teradata and you're putting ETL in Hadoop. Okay, so a lot of people I've seen either they use Abinitio or Informatica or Data Stage, for example. They play a certain role because they have pre-connectors to a lot of other technologies where they can quickly pull in the data. For that, you can still use. But if you are worried about the cost of those, for example, Abinitio is very expensive, right? If you have one node of Abinitio, if you want to go to the second one, it's massively expensive. So the same thing I'm sure with Informatica and uh, Data Stage. Uh, if you want to cluster them, and th those are high cost. So you can use those entities as a, right, uh, data ingestion channels and land your data, raw data, into big data system, uh, Hadoop, and then you do the transformations right there. There are some use cases, in-flight transformations you want to do. I mean, you can use uh, these technologies. But uh, in our case, they, they, were, they were thinking about Informatica in front. We completely uh, taken out Informatica. So from mainframe, we just moved uh, uh, all the raw data from mainframe into Hadoop. I mean, it could be anything. I'm just picking an example here for this particular use case, mainframe. But you can put your other application servers, whatever, right? And then you put into Hadoop, and then you do all the ETL there. And then the process data, the structured data, you move it into Teradata. OK. Thanks, Virat. Uh, the second question is, uh, currently, uh, DW is on SQL Server. And we are planning to go for DW appliance like NetEase or Teradata or Oracle Alexa data. But possible? Is it possible to stay on SQL Server and bring Hadoop? Absolutely, uh, right. I mean, you, you can do that. Uh, there, there's no need for. Uh, that's actually excellent question. So if you are worried about, uh, okay, whether my SQL Server scale it, I think this is a perfect problem here, right? The analogy I gave here is exactly matching the the question you're asking. So you have a SQL Server from Microsoft, and then you want to, right? You are finding probably it cannot scale. Now you reach. To, now let's look at the data. Let's do the data profiling. How much data we're really using? Then offload it to Hadoop, and still you can meet the needs uh, with the SQL Server. Okay. Now, but a third question is. Uh, um, I mean, you kind of touched upon, but when to use Hadoop versus Spark? Uh, 
will spark repair Hadoop. I think you kind of highlighted during your talk. Yeah, yeah. This needs uh, some attention. Right? I mean, a lot of buzz in the market. Oh, Hadoop is dead, and uh, yeah, Spark is. I think uh, it's uh, right. It's a myth, basically. Uh, first of all, uh, as I said in the first slide itself, when I introduced Hadoop side, I mean, there's no other system uh, which can replace today, right? As a technology, wise there's no other system massive data sets. That, that, that's for right taken. Right? So what they are talking, uh, why Spark is getting popular, of course, the low latency, the effectiveness is there. But Spark, I would consider, is part of Hadoop ecosystem. Hadoop is not one technology, right? It's a, it's a consortium of all technologies together, uh, right? There are many programming paradigms, so Spark is one programming paradigm. So what is going to happen, though, is that instead of writing MapReduce, you can write Spark programming, actually, on top of Hadoop. So you still need... Spark and Hadoop, they complement each other because Hadoop was designed early on. I'm talking about five years back. It's for batch computation. And the industry is pushing Hadoop to do perform low latency. Hey, I want Teradata-like application, right? I want low latency, sub-second latency. So that's where Spark is coming. That's the beautiful thing which is happening in, the, in this industry is it's trying, it's trying to solve much more use cases than it was before. So which is a good thing. They're complementary and both are going to there. So we are excited about Spark being in the mix. OK. The, uh, but the next fourth question is, is Hadoop capable of running ad hoc queries like a typical data warehouse? Uh, yes, uh, it can run. Uh, so that's where, I mean, the new technologies, right? I mean, even if you put HBase and Hive, there's one level of uh, ad hoc analysis you can do. So Hive is uh, like synonymous to SQL, right? Uh, almost now there are ANSI SQL functionality is being implemented by some of the vendors. And uh, with the Spark is in the mix. So you load your data sets. There's the Spark and there's the Impala, all this uh, uh, drill. All these are competing in the low latency game. So Spark, uh, right, all these uh, technologies can do ad hoc queries, right? You, you can quickly see whatever you want to run and run on these massive data sets with a like sub-second latency. I mean, maximum you will see three to four seconds on petabytes of data. OK, thanks. Uh, the next question, uh, you mentioned during your presentation uh, using Hadoop for backup. And I mean, it looks very attractive, but uh, is it possible for me to get rid of my Teradata backup uh, does it really work, and how fast will the restores be? No, oh, definitely. Yeah, ba backups is something we have done for one of the customers. Uh, so you offload uh, data from uh, uh, from uh, tapes, right? The tapes are, as I said in the in the slide, uh, tapes are inherently slow. Uh, they take a week time to retrieve it. Take, for example, a bank use case, right? The checks we write it and. I, I do for after three years, some tax audit came or what, uh, whatever the reason be, and you want to retrieve those checks and you, you, you want to get it. So you, you go to any of these banks like Wells Fargo, Bank of America, any of those. Actually, they, they will put a criteria for you saying like one week's time, right? I think these, these are the things which are going to change in future. Uh, maybe the bank might find a new channel. They will, call, they will charge the customer for retrieving historical information. Because there is a condition saying, OK, I can serve you last one year of checks. But you go beyond one year, there's a cost associated with you. Uh, so these new revenue channels also can be exercised with this, right? And uh, it used to be that why it was taking one week? Because they need to retrieve from tape and search and serve it back to the customer. Now what you can do is you can put those into Hadoop, and then you can retrieve it in hours time, right? Or actually, this is a, even like a minute's time, basically. It doesn't look uh, complicated. Just directly, you can index it and get it the uh, right data faster. OK. The other thing, during presentation, it was not clear. Did you use any ETL tools in Hadoop? Yeah, so we, we have not. Uh, so that's also a good question. So a lot of people ask, OK, how do you do ETL on Hadoop, right? Uh, so we, uh, there, there are technologies in open source, like you, you have to use this MapReduce, HivePig. Uh, we have to understand your organization DNA to see the skill sets. If more SQL-ish, then it is more like uh, you go for Hive. And if you have, uh, also, we have to 
keep in mind the use case, uh, then you have to decide uh, between these technologies. But there are ETL tools which are evolving uh, on top of uh, on top of Hadoop, where you can drag and drop and uh, run the workflows and things like that. Okay, thanks, and uh, Bharat, last question. I see. What about analytics? Can I migrate my DW analytical reports to Hadoop? Oh, definitely. So, so analytics requires uh, high performance, right? So uh, that's where EDW played a big role historically. But on the big data side, uh, you have so a lot of people. This, this is like by now, a lot, lot of companies already implemented. You put HBase on big data sets, and you can build the reports, build the Java server, and re build the reporting infrastructure on top of it. Uh, a lot of people uh, have supported this. This is a successful uh, journey for a lot, lot of companies in this space. So the answer is yes. Actually, we got one more question. Uh, um, just give me one second. Uh, oh, yeah. Hadoop is supposed to be for unstructured data, but I don't see any unstructured data that you mentioned in your solution for the bank. OK. So for this bank, it's uh, predominantly uh, structured data. So there's no, I mean, they were doing at that time proof of value and proof of concept use cases. And it went to production. It is live now. It's running in the production. So in those use cases, they had in the phase two, right, get the unstructured data. There is another myth, right? A lot of people think, OK, Hadoop is only for unstructured data. So I want to make a point here is that Hadoop can be used for structured data, right? It is trying to exactly, you can define you put the structured data, define a schema on top of it, and run your queries. So in this particular use case, what I presented, there's no unstructured data. But the whole power of Hadoop comes with actually unstructured data, too. And you can put structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data on Hadoop. OK. So Bharat, that was the last question. Um, so Arzota and Signex Datamatics would like to thank all the attendees. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time out to attend the webinar. And uh, we, there were five reasons to augment your data warehouse with Hadoop. And Bharat kind of talked about um, those questions here. I mean, again, uh, just recapping, if you're looking at the webinar presentation slide, uh, just visit operaonline.signix.com to take a quick assessment. If you want to sign up for a POC for big data analytics, absolutely do visit signix.com. Both Signix and Orzota, we are offering a two-hour free consulting and encourage you to take the advantage. Just email us or visit signix.com and mention the webinar. We would be more than happy. Uh, this webinar, will the recording will be posted. We will send you the link, and the presentation will be shared with all of you. So once again, thanks, everyone, and uh, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.